In this video, we're going to look at implicit differentiation and specifically um, how to take the uh, implicit derivative abstractly. I'm not going to look at applications of it yet. Uh, tomorrow, I'll put up a video with some applications, and then later on, I'll get to some related rates problems. So, quickly, what is an implicit derivative? Well, um, an implicit derivative is basically taking a derivative of both sides of an equation with respect to some variable. Now that variable does not need to be a variable that shows up elsewhere in the equation. It can be um, a lot of times I'll take a derivative with respect to time t, and t doesn't appear elsewhere in the equation, or it can be a variable that appears on some point in the equation, at some point in the equation, maybe on the left hand side, maybe on the right hand side, maybe multiple times. Um, but in doing this, there are a couple important things to remember. The first thing is to be sure to treat all variables as variables, not constants. So just because I'm taking the derivative with respect to, let's say, x, if I see an r there, that can still be a variable. So I shouldn't consider that that derivative is 0 for some strange reason. If I see a pi, that's a constant. And I take the derivative of that and have it be 0. Um, the second thing is this. If taking a derivative with, well, I'll say, respect to a different variable, be sure to use chain rule. And so what I mean by this is the following. Let's just say that I'm taking the derivative with respect to t. And I'm taking the derivative with respect to t of 5y to the 7th. Well, I know from my other rules that the derivative of 5y to the 7th with respect to y is going to be 5 times 7 35, y to the 6th. But here's the idea. y is varying, and it will be some function in terms of t. It could be t, it could be sine of t, it could be something. But y is a function here. So I need to include the derivative of y with respect to t. Whenever these variables don't match up, I include this. So if I had the derivative with respect to t of 5t to the 7th, well, this would just be 35t to the 6th. I don't need to have dt dt because, and I'll write it in here for a second, the derivative of t with respect to t is just 1. It doesn't change anything. Last thing before we see some examples, um, why is it called an implicit derivative? Well, the idea here is um, we have in some way and implicitly defined function. So in this um, example here, y is sort of implied to be a function on t in some way, shape, or form, as opposed to our explicitly defined functions that we've seen before when I say like y equals 5x. Well, that's clearly a function y on the variable x. So let's see a couple examples. This is actually pretty easy. Again, I'm going to be focusing on the um, process of taking the derivative here. If you are looking for examples of how to use it, um, that video is going to come up next, so tomorrow. All right, first example, 
take the implicit derivative of sine of theta equals O over H, so sine is off to hypotenuse with respect to T. And so I just take the derivative, and I'll, I'll write it this way, this is the way I like to show it, sine of theta equals O over H, and I will take the derivative of everything with respect to T. Well, I know the derivative of sine is cosine, so I'll have the cosine, and I'll leave the inside unchanged, but theta is some implicitly defined function, so I need to, and it's not t, so I have to include a d theta dt. And that's going to equal. Over here I have a quotient, so I have to do a quotient rule, which is, um, so, low times the derivative of high, so I, which is h times the derivative of o, which is, I'll show it this way, 1 do dt minus high times the derivative of low, which is O times 1 dh dt, all over the denominator squared, so h squared, and I can clean this up a little bit. So what I get is the cosine of theta, d theta dt, is equal to h do dt, minus O dh dt all over h squared. Okay, now for some more easily useful things. We'll get back to stuff like that first example when we do related rates, but in here I want to find this instantaneous slope of this. And so I just go through and I take the derivative of everything with respect to x. So I had x squared minus 3xy plus y cubed equals 4 plus 2y. And I change colors. I'm getting sick of this magenta. So I'll take the derivative of everything with respect to x. The derivative of x squared is 2x. And the variables match up. I don't need to put a dx dx. This right here, I'm going to do product rule on this part. So I like putting the minus 3 and then doing product rule. And product rule is the second times the derivative of the first. So one, I don't need to do dx dx because those variables mess up. Plus the first times the derivative of the second, which is one dy dx, because the y is different than the x. Plus, I take the derivative of y cubed, which is 3y squared. y is not the same as x, so I have dy dx. And over here, the derivative of 4 is 0. The derivative of 2y is 2, and I have to have the dy dx. And that's pretty much all the new work. Now I just need to solve this out, and here's how this works. So I'm going to distribute the negative 3, and I'll get 2x minus 3y equals, so not equals, minus 3x dy dx plus 3y squared dy dx equals 2 dy dx. And I can do this in many ways. I'm going to subtract the 2 from both sides and move these over there. So, let me write all that down. I'm going to subtract 2x. I'm going to add 3y. And I'm going to subtract 2 dy dx. I want to get dy dx by itself, so let me get everything with uh, dy dx on the left-hand side first. So now I'll have negative 3x dy dx plus 3y squared dy dx minus 2 dy dx equals negative 2x plus 3y. And this sometimes confuses people as well. I, I want to get dy dx by itself, but it shows up into three non-like terms. This has an x, this has a y squared, this has neither x nor y in it. But what I can do is factor out dy dx, and I'll get dy dx times what was left over, negative 3x plus 3y squared minus 2, 
will equal negative 2x plus 3y, and I can finish this off now. So all I need to do is divide both sides by this, and my final answer is dy dx equals negative 2x plus 3y all over negative 3x plus 3y squared minus 2. So that's to find dy dx, which I can use to find the instantaneous slope along whatever this curve, whatever this function defines. Now what if I wanted to find the concavity? Well, I'll do this. So this takes a couple of steps. I'm going to start off by doing the same thing as before and take the implicit derivative. So the derivative of this side is 32x. Derivative of this term is 18y dy dx. And the derivative of 1 is 0. Be careful. I've seen tons of students just sort of bring down the 1. But we don't. It's a constant. The derivative of it is 0 with respect to x. So I'll subtract 32x from both sides and get 18y dy dx equals negative 32x. I'll divide both sides by 18y. And that's going to give me negative 32x over 18y. And in here, I can reduce this down. So 2 goes into 18, 2 goes into 32. So that's just going to be negative 16x over 9y. But now what? Well, I'll take the derivative of this. So let me write this function, dy dx equals negative 16x over 9y. I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x of both of these. So let me bring this up, get some more room. The derivative with respect to x of dy dx is the second derivative. No big surprises there. On this side, I have quotient rule, so I do the low times the derivative of the high, so that's going to be 9y times negative 16 minus the high times the derivative of the low, which is going to be negative 16x times 9 dy dx all over 9y squared. And I can do some work here. So first off, let me combine some things. So um, 9 times negative 16 is negative 144. That's a y. The negative negative makes it addition. 9 times 16 here gives me 144x dy dx. And I'll expand this out. 9y all squared gives me 81y squared. And now I can do some more. So in here, the big problem now is that we have this dy dx. And I want to know this second derivative in terms of x and y only. I don't want to have to toss in some more variables, or something else that's changing. So what do we do? Well, we know dy dx is this, so I'll just substitute that in there. So I have that negative 16x over 9y. I bring everything else down. So I have negative 144y plus 144x times this all over 81y squared. And from this, I can reduce it down. So let me do this work as simply as I can. I'm running out of space here. So what I would do first off is the 144 divided by 9, and that would give me 16. And so from there, I'll get a negative 256 
the x times x is x squared. I'm also, let me change colors again, going to multiply everything through by y over y because I want to get rid of this y in the denominator. And when this distributes through, now I'll have negative 144 y squared. And that'll all be over 81 y cubed. And the only thing I can think of that might be useful to do here still would be perhaps I would want to factor out the negative sign have sort of a negative 144y squared plus 256 um, x squared all over 81y cubed. But that's sort of neither here nor there. All right, feel free to comment below if you do have any questions, and I hope that this helped out.